Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, it's time to finish the wiring up on the front end of our Wilsonton R8. We're going to get our voltage stabilizer tube wired with our new wiring scheme, put our new parts in that. We're going to be completely done with the front end. Then we can move on to the grid boards that supply the negative bias and that also have the coupling caps for the output tubes. And then we'll be done with our parts replacement. So let's go get the front end fixed. Okay, time to come in here and do the soldering work on this voltage stabilizer tube. First thing I'm gonna do is tin up our soldering iron, get a nice clean tip. And I'm going to start by removing all these capacitors. Just get them out of our way. And we're not reusing any of those, so you can toss them over to the side. First thing I'm going to do next is replace this 2.2K resistor. So, unsolder it from this end here. And, and this is the end that the main power from the B plus comes from, or I think it's B1 on the schematic. And come in with our new resistor. Solder it like that. Then come in here and trim it to length. Solder it in place. Next, I'm going to remove this 3.3K resistor that's on the cathode. Just get it out of our way for now. And then get rid of this. This is a 220K. Get it going. And then here's our infamous 39 ohm resistor that we're not sure why it's even in the amplifier, but we're going to be reinstalling it anyway. So the next thing is to get rid of this 150K, and this one's a little more difficult to kind of get to. Probably going to be the trickiest one to solder back in place. So one of the things we're changing in this schematic is we are splitting apart the two cathodes that were paralleled together. So we want to remove this jumper that's going between the two cathodes, which is this wire right here. Then the other thing we're going to be doing is those two wires were tied together 
and these feed the plate of the 6SL7s and before they were tied together and we're going to be splitting those into a dual rail setup where each one feeds one channel and one feeds the other channel. So I'm going to come in here and solder this one back down to this point like that and then this one's going to go to this unused connector right here so we're going to trim this off and it's, it's really handy that they actually have this extra spot there that we can use and we don't have to try to create a tie point build up a little blob of solder here to use as our tie point for these this wire and the resistor that's going to also be connected there. So now we have, this is the, this wire here is going to the plate of the left channel and then this wire is going to the plate of the right channel. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put the 150K resistor back in place that creates the voltage divider. And again, this is one of the, I mean, this isn't super hard, but it's, one of the trickier little parts to pop in here. Just be careful you don't burn any of the wiring around this. This is back when the old game operation that we played as a kid kind of comes in handy. That's connected to pin 1, and this is connected to pin 5, the other end of it. Just like that. So then we're going to take our mystery 39 ohm resistor and we come in here and solder it from pin 4 Let me come in here and solder this from pin 4 over to this end terminal on this little PC board. And I added a little piece of PTFE insulation on this, but you don't really need to do that if you're just careful with where these resistor leads are going so they don't touch each other. So originally there was a 3.3K resistor going between the 6 SN7 voltage stabilizer cathode to the 6 SL7 driver cathode follower tube. And because we're splitting this rail up and it's going to have half the current going through it, we need to put a larger value resistor in there so that we have the same voltage drop that we used to across the pair. 
and I'm going to go with a 5.6K resistor because one, I just happen to have some and I think that's going to get us close enough to the voltage that we had before where it should work fine. So here's our first one. It's going to go from this cathode up to the newly created left channel power supply part of this board. And for right now we're just tacking that in place because we still got to put the capacitor across this too and we'll you know do a little better job of soldering that joint when we get all the components on it. So we're going to come in here and solder the other end of this. And then we get one more of these 5.6K resistors. I am hoping this turns out to be very close to the original voltage. So we don't have to do any further adjustments to this. But if we do, we do. And then solder this other end in. Like that. Okay, so the last few parts we have to replace is we need to install this one resistor here, which is the ground side of our voltage divider, and which is our 220K. I'm going to come up here and kind of clean off some of this solder blobbed up on this ground bus so we get a little cleaner solder of these parts. Then come in and we got this little solder blob we dropped. So the next thing, like I said, is this 220K resistor that goes to the ground here. And let's see if we can solder this without it falling. Then Over the other end of this. We have a nice little blob here to hook our capacitor to. Then the next one we're going to connect is our capacitor that is the 500 volt 33 UF on the input side of the power supply. Solder that, and then the ground, and then we'll come back and add a little solder to that joint down on that PC board, so that we're sure we got a nice good connection down here. Since we got several components connected together there. Now one thing you need to watch is on this one we actually have a big blob of solder underneath this PC board so we need to come under here and clean that up a little bit and again you want to lean down and look under this board and make sure you don't have any big blobs of solder hanging down which could cause problems later so these are the two outputs or the cathodes of this voltage stabilizer tube and there's a cap that goes from here to ground on each one of those that's a 33 UF as well and we're going to solder these in like this. And 
wrap the ground around and then solder this ground to the boss like that come in here and add a little more solder here at the bottom make sure we get a good connection there and then I'm actually going to solder up here at the joint of this resistor and the capacitor to give it a little more stability there. And there we go. So we got two more caps to go and we're all done. And again, the last three of these caps are all 33 UF 350 volt. in and solder this ground and again this is a lot fatter wire than the capacitor lead so you want to put the iron on this fatter wire first and get it heated up and make sure it's at solder melting temperature and then solder to the wire going to the capacitor like that and just like on the other one might not be able to see this on camera, but we're coming here and just adding a little kind of extra blob of solder down there at the bottom. And then right where this resistor and the capacitor lead come together up higher, we're going to put a little blob of solder there too, just to give it a little physical reinforcement there. So then the last one we have is this last 33 UF 350 volt cap that goes across the ground side of the voltage divider come in here solder the positive side down there at the PC board and then we'll come up here and do the ground side up here at the ground bus wire and then we'll be done with the resistor replacement, capacitor modifications to our voltage stabilizer tube. And there we go. We're all done. Again, just make sure that you have the negative side of all these caps going to this ground bus. Because these are all positive voltage on the other side. So... We're going to come in here first and measure the voltage that's coming in off of the B1 terminal. And we have 414 volts. And before it was 416, so that's probably just even a variation of the input power supply. There's 414, 415, so it's right there where it was before. The next thing we want to check is, mainly we just want to see what the voltage is coming out of this voltage stabilizer tube going to the phase splitters. And before we had 232, and there's 231, and 231.3, almost identical to what we had before. So we are good to go. And again, there's 231 and a half. And 231, where it was 232 before. So we're feeding the same voltage, that 5.6K resistor that I guessed at. Looks like a winner. So I think we're done here. Well, as you can see, that part was fairly easy to do. And I have a feeling there's people that this may be the only real mod they do. They may not go in and replace like all the resistors and all the capacitors and all that stuff. And I feel like this is really the first real mod to the amp. Other than replacing this choke, which I also think is a good idea. And I also think replacing those 330UF 450 volt caps with 550 volt versions is a smart move as well as replacing that one 47UF 
which is in the part of this project that we were doing with a 500 volt one. So I think this is all worth doing, especially if this is going to be the only mod you're doing. Maybe do the choke, the power caps, and then do this voltage stabilizer tube mod, and then go listen to the amp and see what you think. I have a feeling that this plus the coupling caps is probably going to be the best bang for your buck. And I feel like this is completing what other people have tried to do on some mods to this amp. And I'm not going to bash the mods other people have tried doing to this amp. And there is some sonic change that can be had by bypassing electrolytic caps. And I have a feeling like this fruit mod that was adding these coupling caps onto the 6SL7s is mainly the sound difference that you're hearing. It's not that it's separating the channels, it's that it's bypassing the electrolytic cap with some film caps. And that can change the way an amp sounds for better or worse. I've done it to some amps that I own that when I did it, they became shrill and it boosted the high frequencies, which may be what your system needs. And by system, I mean your source, amp, speakers, room. May need the high end lifted up and bypassing the caps inside the amp might do that. But the mod that we just did is separating the signals from each other so that there's less to no crosstalk between the two channels, which should help the sound stage separation of the channels and all that stuff and just make the amp sound clearer. Because whenever there's crosstalk between the channels, it's going to make the amp sound muddy. So I haven't listened to this yet. The voltages all came out good, so we're good there. I'm going to hook this thing up and the next video I'll give you a little review of what this sounded like hooked up to my system. So I hope you're enjoying this content and I hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, consider joining my Patreon, and until next time, have a nice day! Yeah.